Finding out you have breast cancer can be really frightening. There's suddenly so much information to take in and it can feel like most of it goes over your head. This video gives an overview of breast cancer treatment. What treatments you choose will depend on your individual circumstances. The good news is that, in general, breast cancer is really treatable and, for most people, the risk of dying of breast cancer is much lower than you think. My name is Alex Brown and I'm a breast surgeon in Wellington, New Zealand. I think it's helpful to break breast cancer treatment into two main categories. First, we have to think about the breast cancer that we know about in the breast. This is usually treated with surgery. Radiotherapy is another important local regional treatment. Second, we have to think about the risk of breast cancer cells elsewhere in the body that might cause a problem in future. This risk can be managed with whole body treatments such as chemotherapy, endocrine therapy or targeted therapy. More on that later. Let's consider the tumour in the breast. Most of the time it's possible to remove the tumour with a margin of healthy tissue and preserve the rest of your breast. About 40% of the time mastectomy is needed usually because of the distribution or size of cancer within the breast. See the video about breast conservation or mastectomy for more information. Most patients have surgery to the lymph nodes in the armpit at the same time as their breast surgery. If the sentinel nodes are clear, there is a much lower risk of anything elsewhere in the body. Before the 1950s, breast cancer was almost always treated with total mastectomy. Studies through the 60s and 70s demonstrated that it was safe not to remove the whole breast as long as the rest of the breast was treated with radiotherapy. If radiotherapy is omitted, there is a much higher rate of local recurrence, so everyone having breast conservation surgery is recommended a course of radiotherapy. In some circumstances, radiotherapy is recommended even after a mastectomy particularly if the tumour is over 5 cm or if there is cancer in the lymph nodes. These days, radiotherapy can also be used to treat the lymph nodes in the armpit after a positive sentinel node biopsy. Radiotherapy is a targeted X-ray treatment that kills abnormal cells more than healthy cells. It is delivered daily, usually over 5 to 15 visits. Each visit only takes a couple of minutes on the machine. Radiotherapy is important to reduce the risk of local recurrence of breast cancer. Now let's think about those whole body treatments. Endocrine therapy means taking an oestrogen blocking tablet every day for 5 or 10 years. In general, endocrine therapy is very safe with relatively mild side effects. Most people get some hot flushing, menopausal type symptoms, some people get joint pains and you may need to have your bone health monitored. Chemotherapy is usually a bigger undertaking. You have to go for an infusion once every three weeks for three months, usually followed by a weekly infusion for another three months. Most people lose their hair and side effects can be more serious. Chemotherapy works by poisoning rapidly dividing cells. Targeted therapy like trastuzumab, also called Herceptin, targets a particular receptor found in some cancers. Trastuzumab is also given as an infusion every three weeks, usually for a year. Recently, an injectable version has become available, which can be given at home. So, how do we decide who gets which treatment? Well, it comes down to the biology of your cancer and the size of your risk. Your breast cancer is tested for a few receptors and given a grade. Breast cancer that is oestrogen or progesterone receptor positive, about 75%, will respond to endocrine therapy. Breast cancer that is HER2 positive, about 15%, will respond to trastuzumab. Grade is a measure of how disorganised the cells look under the microscope. 
Grade 1 cancer is still trying to look a bit like breast tissue and tends to be more slowly dividing and growing, whereas Grade 3 cancer is more disorganised and tends to be more rapidly dividing and growing. This means it's more likely to develop the ability to lodge and grow outside the breast. It also means it's more effectively poisoned by chemotherapy. What about the risk of something somewhere else in the body? Well, this is determined by the size and grade of the main tumour in the breast and how much cancer there is in the lymph nodes. When this risk is higher, we arrange whole body scans to check for any tumours around the body, but scans can only pick up lumps of cancer over about a centimetre. A clear scan can't rule out a few cells sitting somewhere which might cause a problem in future, which can be many years later. Most people with ER-positive breast cancer are recommended to take endocrine therapy for 5-10 to 10 years. Nearly all patients with HER2-positive breast cancer are recommended a course of trastuzumab, or Herceptin, and that's always given with a course of chemotherapy, although the intensity of the chemotherapy can be adjusted. You're more likely to be recommended a course of chemotherapy if you are younger and healthier, have a larger or higher grade cancer, or have nodal involvement. For triple negative breast cancer, when there are no ER, PR or HER2 receptors, Chemotherapy is the only whole body treatment option, so it is more likely to be recommended. So, in summary, there are five main breast cancer treatments. Surgery, radiotherapy, endocrine therapy, chemotherapy and targeted therapy. Which treatments you are recommended will depend on your specific circumstances. You'll need treatment for the cancer that we know about in the breast and some sort of whole body risk management treatment in case there's anything somewhere else in the body that we don't know about. Your treating team will be happy to answer your questions and it's often helpful to write them down in advance. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Have a look at my other videos to help you make the best decisions for you.